So I played a couple of RTS that are up and coming. I have their demos out or previews or whatever it is. And one of the ones that was new to me at the very least was this game called God Sworn. I saw someone suggest it while talking about another RTS and I thought it looked really cool. So I took a gander at the demo and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to give a little overview of what this is and what they have available for the demo. And then uh, of course, give them some credit for what they've done already. And then perhaps another video uh, I'll actually make just to give them feedback directly because it is still in alpha, as you can see up on top. And uh, there's definitely things that could be improved on, especially as far as the overall feeling of the game. Like a move doesn't really seem to work right now, for instance. But yeah, that'll be a different video. Right now, I just want to introduce you guys to Godsworn. As you can see in the bottom left, they have uh, open feedback in their official Discord and there are only two developers. So that's pretty cool. Pretty impressive. Uh, people have been telling me that a lot of the assets are, you know, just from Unity straight up, and that's totally fine because if a game is fun to play and it feels nice to play, then that's what's most important. Not necessarily all the bells and whistles that can come from having everything be original. Perhaps they can add more stuff later on as they continue getting support. And then some of the most common questions I would imagine that they have had, such as how to select all combat units and whatnot, are also down on the bottom left. But you can see that they have a plan for a campaign. They have plans for custom games, you can get your options, you can wishlist it on Steam, join the Discord, so on and so forth. Right now for the demo, only custom game available. But you do see that there are lobbies available, you can be playing against other people. If you create game, create whatever you want, public or private, you can uh, make AI, normal, hard, insane. There are two heroes to choose from, we'll get into that in a little bit. But I wanted to say what else uh, option-wise they had. So I made the mistake of making this uh, pri uh, not private. <laughs> it's my bad. I don't know if I can kick this guy out. There we go. Sorry, dude. Um, but that's a good sign. <laughs> Someone actually wanted to play immediately. So we have the first map available and you can see that they're calling this uh, skirmishes. Actually, you cannot. Let me go ahead and move my camera for a hot second. So they call these skirmishes uh, the 1v1 maps, I suppose, or uh, actually more than 1v1. So you got two player, three, four, six and eight and it looks like they even have a six player option available too if you want to play with your friends that's awesome you can see that they actually have different ways of victory currently just the normal victory by the looks of things and shrine victory only i'm actually not sure what the difference is to be honest they allow cheats if you want to have fun and uh, you can actually change the amount of units that is your unit cap i imagine as far as any type of competition will go there'll be a set amount determined by the community but all the way from 60 to 140 units and you have a cap on your worshippers or villagers which is a uh, not a feature i know about too much in uh, other rts but then you have these things called challenges and from my uh brief foray into this it does seem like it's basically co-op i have yet to play with other people so it's not been cooperative for me so far <laughs> but it does say one to three players later on they'll add something else that's one to four players and the uh, idea here of the first one build up and defend the hill all ways enemies try to conquer it, to survive, explore, and expand for more resources. So they have everything really to let you play this versus AI versus friends, as well as some of the more uh, collective versus AI. Uh, kind of, you know, obviously you could comp stomp if you wanted to as well. But I've had a lot of fun with these challenges. I haven't really played uh, 1v1 as of yet. And I've been playing around with both characters. We do have a character that's uh, said to be easy. And it does feel like she is the easier character. And then you have a character that is uh, hard, and he's uh, definitely an edgelord. And the way that they play out, as you can see, light and dark. You kind of get the picture, right? Um, and so we'll go ahead and jump into the challenge, because it still gives you the, the, the idea of what everything's going on. You still get the same units and buildings and all that good stuff as you would in regular 1v1. I'm going to do it alone. And uh, I have actually beaten normal with both characters, and then I tried insane. And insane was pretty hard. <laughs> Let's just start off with the original character, I guess the one that the default character, the easy one to play with. She was a lot easier to play on this map because she has something that comes down and uh, distracts the waves. But you can see that it kind of has a Warcraft feel right off the bat. As I uh, move my camera, I guess, to the, whoop, not the entire scene. That wouldn't do very well. I want to lock that one down. Um, if I move my camera like here, I suppose we can kind of get the, the gist of it. So you got the mini map, you got your hockey selection, you have her abilities right here. You're also going to have top bar abilities like, um, uh, like co-op commanders, I guess. 
I also equated this kind of the age of mythology and generally the stream has been kind of saying age mythology mixed with Warcraft and then some other aspects as far as the actual economy. But you have your first level gives you the first level choices of the either top bar commands or her own commands. Uh, you can kind of just figure out which one's which as they are chosen and eventually you can get all of these as well. You don't have to pick and choose uh, strictly, I suppose. Like initially you have to pick and choose, but eventually you can get every single one. Solar Ray, Light Pierce from the Sky, Scorching Enemy, and Healing an Ally uh, are your allies. As you can see, we've been building Worshippers. And by building, we building, I mean the computer has been building. Right now, they're just defaulting to gaining Faith, which is a powerful um, resource eventually. But initially, it's actually not that powerful. It is how you use your spells, so it is still important to have early on. But... Uh, you also get to build units with faith, and those are the kind of more spellcaster type, a little bit stronger as well. So I, you know, as I said, Age of Mythology, if you've ever played that, you do have that, um, that same dynamic, actually, where then you can build a temple and you can build from there. So, you know, you build foresters, you can gather, you have enough resources to build both of those buildings. We have them auto-building as well, but you can pick them and then tell it to build, I suppose. No, actually. I've probably been doing that wrong this entire time. <laughs> but you now see that there's Wave 1, Angry Militants, and uh, hopefully my commander can go ahead and take care of this by herself. I believe she can. And uh, with the help of the Solar Ray, it'll be totally fine. You can see that uh, two people actually immediately went to this one, but I need to make someone else go to this one. And you have food as a resource, lumber as a resource, as well as gold as a resource, and you do have supply that you need to keep track of. This is your uh, Worshippers assignable total and maximum so we set it to the 32 maximum worshipers and 100 max on the supply and we're almost about to have a battle here uh i want to go out after the battle and try and start clearing some of these camps again warcraft comes to mind first and foremost for that one and you can see these guys come in let's go ahead this chick also has an aoe for her sword so that's another reason why she's a little easier earlier on the nun dude, priest dude, whatever, uh, does heal, so take rid of, get rid of him first. I probably should have built a war camp earlier on. Again, they'll go ahead and just uh, pick one who's worshipping to go ahead and build. And then this should be fine. Yeah, with only the archer left over. Over here you see one of the camps. They have littered camps all around. The camps do range from like one enemy unit to two and different types of enemy units. I think there's even some that have like three or four wolves, for instance, a little bit more difficult, I suppose. But you can also see that there's a lady cowering. So the dynamic uh, here is that if you do manage to, can you guys like join up so I can AOE you? Great. Uh, I got level two, so I'm gonna get Tear of Amber. This is what really helps in the game like this. So you put this down and now this lane is kind of covered for a little bit. Let's do buy time as you move around the map and have to respond to the waves. So the Worshipper now is released to me, and this is not just a co-op only thing. This actually exists in the 1v1 as well. So I thought that was an interesting, different dynamic for um, an RTS. And you have a, also a different way of collecting food, which is deer. Uh, another Worshipper that I'm going to go save. We have my warp camp set up so I can actually build tribesmen and rangers. This actually uh, can be different depending on the commander. So usually there's kind of like... A similar amount of units and upgrades, but depending on the commander, there are some differences. So now that I have some worshippers and I've filled up all my stuff, what I really want to have is more gold, because you can see on my main town hall, whatever you call the shrine, I need gold to actually upgrade it and to get new buildings and upgrades, which if you have ever played an RTS, more technology, more gooder units. That's how that works. So that's kind of the basics of Godsworn. You can see some of the way that it uh, plays out as well as far as the unit battles. I will say the larger the battles get, the more that it is difficult to figure out what's going on. The lethality is quite low, as you can see as well, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the battles are all that readable. I would say that Warcraft does win out in that regard, having low lethality but very readable uh, uh, battles where you can very much see like, oh, okay, that guy's under attack. I need to do something about that. I have uh, definitely been a little more just like a move. Well, when a move kind of works <laughs> and just clash armies at some points. But that's kind of the gist. You got towers you can salvage. The witch cabin is kind of more the spellcaster thing. 
Then you're going to have Warrior's Hall, even more powerful, kind of more melee units. Alka is the more expensive mythical units and a siege unit as well. And then Celestial Hold is the most powerful strong divine units uh, where you get, uh, I forget what they're called, but it's like, I think that's like basically tier three is what it is. So um, I don't know if they're going to add an actual tier three because you can see that the shrine says tier two shrine. And that's as far as I've gotten. There might be intentions to add even more units and more levels, but this is the gist. So you want your food. And food is the basic one, so you can build basically with this. Lumber builds buildings and towers, as well as archers, which seems to be a common theme in RTS. And then you have the faith and the gold that are also necessary. Faith is also used a lot for the upgrades. So you do want to probably initially not have many worshippers worshipping, but then as the game goes on, you do want to go ahead and let them stay there and worship, which they automatically do every time they pop. I'm supply block, which is why they're no longer building, but you would see this continuing to build a worshipper if it wasn't supply blocked. So that's the gist of it. Um, I thought the battles looked pretty cool. I definitely liked the uh, aesthetic of the game and the music is nice and chill to listen to. I like the dynamic. I like the w reasons to go out on the map. And uh, of course, the appeal to a lower, I guess, skill floor, something that, you know, people don't feel as stressed macroing in an RTS. This one has kind of hit that. So I'm pretty excited for it. I actually really liked it. It um, is apparently bare bones, but I have not... I have not cared. Like, if, if a lot of these things are from the regular Unity, that does not matter to me. So with two developers, this is already a pretty awesome start. And uh, definitely, if you like Warcraft, I would say give this a shot. And uh, yes, the top bar abilities do get a lot cooler as you go down. And they do cost a lot more faith. So eventually, you can feel really awesome with your hero. But that's, uh, that's kind of the gist. So if you guys like it, let me know. If you think it looks absolutely terrible, I guess you can say that too. But I definitely want to give it a little bit of advertisement. Because as far as the games that I've checked out, this is the one that makes me feel like the most Blizzard RTS and the most fun as well. Because they included this kind of co-op thing right off the bat with the demo, which I really appreciate. Or the alpha <laughs> demo. So uh, hopefully they have a lot more uh, work to put into it. And it's actually a big success. There's my awesome tower doing its thing, by the way. So that's going to be it. I think you saw that there is going to be a couple of people actually playing games. So it's not like it's going to be totally dead. Definitely get some friends and play out or just play versus AI, which I've been having fun with. I'm going to try and beat insane eventually, if that is even possible. And uh, that'll be on my stream, as well as maybe a couple of attempts on this YouTube. So thanks for watching, guys. Check out God Sworn and make sure to give them your feedback on what you think can be improved and what you're looking for in an RTS. And I'll see you later for more video games. Bye, guys.